Welcome back to this mini-series, Music Without Theory. Today we're going to talk about harmonies. What do you mean by that? A harmony is created by playing or singing more than one pitch note at a time. For me, the first song that comes to mind when we're talking about harmonies is Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. The guitarist Brian May remembers Freddie Mercury giving the band a first listen to the song in the early 70s. And he said, I remember Freddie coming in with loads of bits of paper. He'd play the piano like most people play the drums. And this song he had was full of gaps where he explained that something operatic would happen here and so on. He worked out the harmonies in his head. You can work out harmonies in your head by listening to your favourite song and singing a melody which is above or below the lead vocal melody. This is how I first got into creating harmonies. I got my peaches out in Georgia. I got my peaches out in Georgia. I got my peaches out in Georgia. Listening to and singing along with harmonies which are in your favourite song is a great way to familiarise yourself with harmonies and to see what works and what doesn't. Harmonies are amazing because they can deepen the emotional impact of your music. They can really stir a listener and result in goosebumps or other emotional outbursts. The more nuanced and personalised the harmony is, the more personalised and unique the music will sound. So I really love an artist called Neo and how she creates vocal arrangements and vocal harmonies. She doesn't always choose the harmony that's really um, obvious or standard or really pleasing to the ear. Sometimes she uses harmonies which have a little bit of a clash and it's quite contrasting and, and that's quite unique and it creates this tension in the song which is really interesting to listen to especially when it resolves. And I think that's a really cool way of using harmonies. Multiple harmonies, so several melodies weaving in and out of each other, can add elements of richness and complexity and texture to a song. <clears throat> Harmonious musical intervals trigger a rhythmically consistent firing pattern in certain auditory neurons, and sweet sounds carry more information than harsh ones. Have you ever wondered why some notes sound good together and some sound terrible together? <laughs> For centuries, humans have studied melody and harmony to try and figure out why we enjoy listening to certain melodies together and why some of them sound really bad. A little bit of history now. Harmony is thought to have evolved from music practices of the Middle Ages, the organisation of which was derived from ancient Greek music, in which music or singing would happen in unison at the octave. When two notes played together sound good, it's called consonance. When they sound terrible, it's called dissonance. A long time ago, scientists and musicians worked together to form a list of tone pairs that when played together, either produced consonants or dissonance. These were listed in order of pleasantness and the resulting list, referred to as the consonance pattern, was created by Helmholtz in 1895. It's still used in research into audio today and some studies suggest that connections between neurons in the brain correlate with these consonant sounds. Harmonies can turn a good song into a great song, from basic to super complex and sophisticated. Ariana Grande is arguably one of the greatest when it comes to vocal arrangements and harmonies, and she said this on Twitter. I love adding more harmonies than anyone will ever notice or hear, that no one ever asked for or needed. For a simple three-part harmony, you can sing complementary notes above or below a melody. Da 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 da, da 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 da. As we talked about in a previous episode, melody is a sequence of single notes, a tune. The goal of the harmony should be to support the main tune or the lead line, whether it's a vocal line or an instrumental line. A lead melody should be able to stand on its own, whereas it's not necessary for a harmony to be able to do this. A great example of when people sing in harmony together is in choirs. And joining a choir is an amazing way to pick up this skill. There are also a few apps out there like Harmony Helper app that help you find and create harmonies for different melodies. In music production, there's also a lot of tools that can help you find and create a harmony digitally through using tools like a vocoder, pitch shifter, autotune. An artist that I love called Imogen Heap has this incredible song called Hide and Seek and there are so many harmonies that weave in and out of each other and it creates this incredibly full sound and it's amazing and you should check out if you haven't heard it already. On this song she uses a keyboard controlled digital harmonizer to generate distorted harmonies and it's a cappella and it's just amazing. So good. Check it out. Next time you find yourself singing along to your favourite song, 
why not practice harmonising? If you're not clued up on the music theory of harmonies, don't let that hold you back. I know loads of musicians, including myself, who don't rely on music theory knowledge when it comes to creating complex vocal arrangements and multiple harmonies within a song. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Hit subscribe for more and leave a comment to let us know what song you love harmonising with. Thanks for watching.